CBS News headquarters at the Kennedy Space Center. This is the CBS Evening News with Walter Cronkite. Good evening. Five spacemen are orbiting the Earth tonight, heading toward that Soviet American meeting in space. Two countdowns, 10,000 miles apart, sent the Soviet Soyuz and the American Apollo flawlessly into orbit for their historic rendezvous on Thursday and two days of working together in space. The Russians got the joint mission off to a perfect start and for the first time let the world and their own people watch. Cosmonauts Alexei Leonov and Valery Kubasov, both space veterans, appeared relaxed and ready as they put on their space suits and went to their waiting Soyuz. The Soviet openness for this international venture extended even to their new mission control center at Moscow. And the TV scene from there was not unlike that shown so often from Houston. The Soyuz got off precisely as scheduled at 8.20 a.m. Eastern time, and here's how Soviet control described it with Houston translating. Systems of uh, the engines are powered up. Center, the American astronauts Tom Stafford, Deke Slayton, and Vance Brand were asleep when Soyuz went up. They sent the cosmonauts congratulations on a great launch and then prepared for their own. 
Like the cosmonauts seven and a half hours earlier, the astronauts entered their spacecraft about three hours ahead of launch time. This last scheduled U.S. space shot for four or five years attracted the usual thousands of watchers to the central Florida coast. Among them were hundreds and hundreds of invited guests. Soviet Ambassador Dobrynin gave further emphasis to the detente of the mission when after watching the Soyuz launch with President Ford in Washington, he flew here to watch Apollo go up. Engine sequence start. Zero. One, zero, launch commit. We have a liftoff. All engines building up thrust. Moving out. Clear the tower. Tower Roger, tower clear. Roger, Tom, you got good thrust on all engines here. Right on the money. Uh, Roger, I got a roll program. Yeah, Roger, Tom, there. Roger. There she goes. Pitch program. We'll shake the lift off, but it's smooth as milk now. Okay. Out of launch vehicle, beginning, beginning a 45 second maneuver to the proper roll. Trajectory looking good. Uh, we're on the way. Thank you, Tommy, looking real fine. Coming up on one minute, we're clear of the beach. Now three miles in altitude, one mile down range. Stand by for mode one Bravo. Mark, one Bravo. One Bravo, Roger. Cabin pressure relieving as expected, coming up on the region of maximum dynamic pressure. And we're still uh, we're through max Q, everything's still looking good. In your feet wind on your way. Space headquarters in New York. Here is correspondent Peter Jennings. Union in Space talked about for weeks, months, and years now between an American space capsule and a Russian space capsule. Greeted with widespread enthusiasm, some indifference, and occasional criticism. We are literally moments from docking now. The Soyuz and the Apollo are very close together. Apollo, of course, has been in pursuit of the Soyuz ever since liftoff a couple of days ago, and now they are beginning to approach Western Europe for a dock up. ABC Science and Space Editor Jules Bergman is traditionally, as always, at the Mission Control in Houston. Jules, does it look as good from there as it does from here? Peter, it couldn't be better. Both Apollo and Soyuz are now station keeping some 20 to 50 meters or 60 to 150 feet apart. Tom Stafford steered his spaceship up beneath and behind Soyuz about a half an hour ago. I'm still trying to grasp exactly the attitude of the spacecraft that the spacecraft are in now. I infer that they are in the 60-degree roll to the left that the flight plan calls for, which Stafford and Lano agreed on. The roll maneuver necessary for it to acquire and lock on the ATS satellite. And we're seeing one of the VHF antennas, we think, uh, 
sticking up in, in front of Apollo on the docking module. Indeed, the, the, the picture in the very foreground there is the black shadow of the Apollo docking module. And now you can see Soyuz. It was a, a little further away than we've been led to expect. We'd say Soyuz is now about 120 or 30 feet away from Apollo. And there's Stafford moving in ever so slowly, but not too slowly. One of the tricks of docking like this, as Stafford has told me, is you can't go too slow, otherwise you won't know what your rate of closure or range rate is. And indeed, you may hit the other fellow. So you've got to keep some speed up, some feeling of motion up. And as you can see, it's like moving in very slowly to find your garage door at night in your yard. Very, very slowly, about four or five miles an hour, just enough to establish a sense of closing and motion. Uh, all the work and the power is being done here by Apollo. Stafford is using um, his RCS, or Reaction Control System thrusters, and very small braking maneuvers. Actually, actually, he was already going fast enough to ensure the docking. What he's doing is like turning, pushing on the brakes of your car to slow the vehicle down ever so slightly as you would stop in front of the garage. There's Mission Control in Houston, of course. That's right. Glenn Lonnie, the... As our TV picture goes, uh, it's been real good. It is, uh, as you maneuver around and the sunlight varies on the two spacecraft, uh, it does get very bright. If you're an average slave and linear, uh, is complete. we want to stay there. Roger. And as you hear there, that's Moscow Control yeah. confirming from Soyuz that they indeed have the right orientation and attitude for docking. Now as we bear down, you're seeing the picture through the right-hand Apollo docking window, I think, or rendezvous window. Soyuz is no more than 40 or 50 feet away, and Tom is still putting on the brakes for this historic first docking in space and first joint manned spaceflight. And Soyuz, of course, which normally is green, now looking very white, which would be lighter on a black and white television set, is the reflection of the sun, eh? Right, and there are the solar panels. On the very top of Soyuz is the VHF antenna that the Russians agreed to add in a major concession to U.S. technology. That was the, the antenna used at 7 o'clock this morning for Stafford to establish the distance between the two spacecraft, where he first found they were about 240 miles apart. Now you're hearing Stafford and Lanov in the final part of the docking, They're getting ready to dock. Three meters. Nine feet. One meter. Three feet. Docked. Some 136 miles above the Earth at 17,500 miles an hour. We have succeeded. Everything is excellent. Are you in the polar and shaking hands now? <laughs> Alexei Leonor, Leonor, saying that the two capsules have themselves shaken hands and a few hours away from the actual handshake between. Tom Stafford and Alexei Leonov. I knocked on the hatch and I heard him knock back. And I said in Russian, Kotel Budatov, like, who's there? Like, you know, 140 miles up, who else could be there? On a show, Hawk Provide, look free. Okay, the camera. Ha ha! Ah, just the Got it? It'll stay open. Uh, go ahead, go ahead, Tom. Alexi. Mr. Volk? <laughs> uh, okay, turn on the camera, hit the remote. Okay. Here. Camera. Uh. It was really the handshake uh, which symbolized uh, potential lessening of tension in the Cold War and, and friendship. Russia, Soviet, may our joint work in space serve for the benefit of all countries and peoples on the earth. Alexei is a great artist, and during those two days, uh, he sketched in a black and white sketch two pictures of me, and he gave them to me. I have them very proudly framed in my house, and they'll be going into a museum.
This is the CBS Evening News with Walter Cronkite. Good evening. The last of the Apollos, the spaceships which took men to the moon, has returned from her last voyage. With astronauts Tom Stafford, Deke Slayton, and Vance Brand aboard, the spacecraft splashed down in the Pacific after an historic Soviet-American meeting in space. Morton Dean reports. It wasn't just the Apollo spacecraft coming down, it was the curtain, the last Apollo mission. And it ended with the degree of precision that has marked most U.S. space performances. Right on time and just about right on target. Plopping into the Pacific, 320 miles west of Pearl Harbor, and within sight of the main recovery ship, the USS New Orleans. The spacecraft did tip upside down on impact. No major problem, and soon it was righted. Helicopters were overhead, swimmers dropped into the water almost as soon as the Apollo itself splashed in. Even when the seas are calm, as they were today, this for the astronauts is often the worst part of the round trip to space. All that bobbing around, it's a great spaceship, but a lousy boat, that's how one astronaut once described it. With its stabilizing balloons looking like giant ears, the Apollo looked something like a giant Mickey Mouse doll. From inside the capsule, word that the three astronauts were feeling okay, were glad to be back. Soon the carrier was alongside, lines attached to the capsule, and with the astronauts still in it, it was lifted onto the deck. Astronaut Stafford, Brand, and Slayton looking bright and chipper after nine days in space. They did wobble a bit. Takes time getting used to gravity after being in a cramped and weightless environment for so long a time. Greeting the astronauts by phone, President Ford. On behalf of your fellow Americans, about 214 million of them, congratulations and thanks for a very successful and extremely productive flight in space. We're delighted to have you back safely, and we're very, very proud of the great job that you did. Your safe return uh, marks the close of the Apollo program, and you and all of the rest who have been participants should be extremely proud of its success from the beginning to the present. No more ceremonies or splashdowns such as this for the foreseeable future. Next American in space won't go for at least another four years. And when that happens, it'll happen in a new type of spaceship, one that looks and lands something like a jet plane. Morton Dean, CBS News Space Headquarters, New York. Soyuz cosmonauts Alexei Leonov and Valery Kubasov came down three days ago, and today in Moscow they met with Western reporters, and Leonov said the joint flight was, in his words, as smooth as peeled eggs.